So, uh, my friend, uh, uh, Pastor Pedro Ortiz is with us this morning. Uh, I've known him. I've known. I've known him for a very long time since uh, our little kids were ankle. Uh, ankle size. Uh, he and I used to serve in youth ministry together, and uh, we got to watch a revival start uh, in youth ministry together. And uh, we would take turns screaming at the kids and uh, and 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 yelling fire. And we've just seen so many uh, lives that have been radically changed uh, through that and uh, to this day. And uh, we don't talk as much as we used to because he don't ever call me. Uh, I call him. I'm just do that. I you know just I just. Just doing the ministry of condemnation. That's all that is because the church has been robbed of that, right? We just need to restore the ministry of condemnation. Uh, uh, but I love him. Pastor Pedro, if you come on up here. Yeah, if you would just honor him today. So great having you and your beautiful family here today. Stretch your hand if you would. We're going to have some fun today. Um, uh, this, this service is supposed to be done at 12.30. That is in 36 minutes, and if you've ever met Pastor Pedro, that's not going to happen. Uh, but uh, there'll be extra anointing for you if you stay. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. we thank you for that anointing that you give preachers, Father. We thank you for that Isaiah 6 spirit of burning, Father. We ask, mm, yeah, ha, Holy Spirit, that you would continue to move in the, in the, in the, in the, in the way you have been moving. Uh, Lord, we, we, we say today deep calls unto deep, and we're crying out for the deep inside of him to come out and overflow and touch hearts and heal lives. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Give it up one more time. Pastor Pedro Ortiz. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Carl, Pastor Tracy. It's always a privilege and an honor to be in God's house. Amen. 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 I don't think you heard me. Amen. I, just re I just refer to this place, God's house. Amen. That, that means there's got to be some God's children up in here. Come on. So, um, and it's always a privilege, a privilege and an honor to be preaching the word of God. Come on. Um, I love Jesus. Good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> And I know that you love Jesus. And I believe that God is going to do something beautiful this morning. Amen. Yeah. I want to read, a, I want to read a, a quote, actually. And this quote is, was, um, comes from A.W. Pink. He was an English Bible teacher back in, um, back in England. 19, he was born in 1986. And this is what he said. He said, 19, 18, 1886, sorry. <laughs> 1886. And this is what he said. He says, it's true that many are praying for worldwide revival, but it would be more timely and more scriptural for prayer to be made to the Lord of the harvest, Amen. that he will raise up and thrust forth laborers yes. who will fearlessly and faithfully preach those truths which are calculated to bring about revival. Amen. Amen. So we're in a series, right? We're in a series of revival, spiritual revival. Amen, right? And so I remember, you know, back then, 1998, when I gave my life to Jesus, I had a, I had a strong encounter. My life was radically changed when I had, when, when he touched me, when I had this encounter with God. And, you know, back then, for those that don't know me, back then, I used to be like probably every other teenager that is that you see right now in drugs, running around with girls, partying. See, back then we used to have these house club, house parties. Right nowadays, I don't know what you guys do, but or what they do, but um, but you know. And now the drugs are are a little crazier too. Now it's all chemical and this and that. I don't even know half of half of the drugs that are out there. Back then it was just weed, you know. But <laughs> hey, but the Lord, He had He. When he grabbed my heart, when he touched me and he changed me, there was nothing. There was that, for me that was my spiritual revival, yeah. because everything, everything that God placed inside of us, everything that God placed inside of me came back alive. I didn't know it was there. He did because he put it there, and it just came back alive. So in this series about spiritual revival, what I want to speak about is about hearts ablaze. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. So let's let's go ahead into the scripture, and this author. He said it very perfectly because the Bible speaks about that. The Bible speaks about, you know, the harvest is ready. People are ready. People are ready to encounter Jesus. Yes. Hello? Yeah. Amen. 
People are ready to encounter what to to encounter what God has placed in you inside of you. And so the harvest is ready. The, the Bible says that, the, that if you look at the, the fields are, are plentiful and, and people are out there and they need Jesus. They need a touch from God. They need a miracle. They need salvation. They need healing. And God is saying, you are the answer. So let's stop praying. Let's stop praying for, for revival, right? And let's start praying for God to, to bring those revivalists out into the world. That's what God is wanting us to do, for us to go out. So I'm just going to go ahead and read. In Luke 24, Luke 24, we're there, 30. So now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and, it, and gave it to them. Now I want to read a couple of scriptures before that, amen? So just, just go along with me. It says in verse 29, 28, sorry. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone farther. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is towards the evening, and the day is far spent. And he, he went, and he stayed with them. Now it came to pass, I just read that, right? The table with them, he broke it, blessed it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes, 31, then their eyes were opened, Hallelujah. and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. Now verse 32. And they said to one another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? Now, let me just give you a, a background on this story. At that time, all of these people, all of the Israelites were supposed to be in Jerusalem. And the reason why is because they were celebrating Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruits. These are the feasts of the Lord, right? And so they were supposed to be in Israel. So in this story, if you never read this story before, it talks about two disciples. And these two disciples says that they were walking, they were going back to Emmaus. Now follow me. These two disciples, they were walking back to Emmaus. Now the question is, why were they going back to Emmaus when they were supposed to be in Jerusalem? So along comes Jesus, this is after his resurrection, along comes Jesus and he starts walking with these two disciples. Now, I want you to picture this because these two disciples are disciples of who? Jesus. Okay, so we're on the right page, we're, we're together in this, right? So they're disciples of Jesus and Jesus shows up and walks with them and they do not recognize Jesus. As a matter of fact, the scripture says that they were walking, and they were walking with their heads down. They were saddened. And so Jesus comes, and he speaks to them. And actually, in one, of the, one of the disciples, uh, Cleopas, he's known to be Jesus' uncle. He was Joseph's brother. So not even Jesus' uncle recognized Jesus. So they're walking, and they're disappointed, and they're telling Jesus, are you the only one around here that don't know what happened? And so they're telling Jesus about what happened to Jesus. Hmm. A lot of times we go through that, amen, right? A lot of times we go through that. A lot of times we go through this explanation. We want to explain to God. We want, sometimes we even complain to God, and God already knows everything. But the beautiful thing about it is that when Jesus came to the disciples, he didn't come to the disciples to bring them down. They already, he already knew they were down. You didn't, you didn't think Jesus knew that they were saddened? Right. Yeah. Jesus came to encourage them. So when, a lot of times when, when Jesus asks you what's going on, it's not so that you can go ahead and just go ahead and, you know, even though if you, if you want to vent, go ahead and vent. But Jesus already knows what you're going to say. Yeah. Right? We spend so much time yeah. in things that really doesn't, lift us up and edify us yeah. and we spend energy and time and all of this and lose hair like me and god is saying if he can just go straight to the resource you just can be right there yeah. so jesus was walking with them and he says to them he says to them listen so he said he says to them this he says to them that these things had to happen i he he had to die. And as he's walking with them, it says there, 
when he opened up the scripture, when he started talking about what the prophets did, about what the law, what, the things that had to happen, didn't, didn't the, the scriptures, didn't our hearts starting, started to burn within us? And then it says that he sat on the table. Well, now, what does table represent? Communion? Fellowship. Fellowship. Amen. Communion. Fellowship. Table represents extended intimacy, extended relationship. Yeah. Yeah. The only people that you will bring to your place, right, of fellowship, to your place where you're going to come and eat are people that you know, right? Yeah. Friends family and the conversations that you have around the table are what hey how was your day right well you know honey this happened today at work and you start talking about things that happened throughout the day so it's interesting that it was in that place that these two disciples it wasn't when they were walking with jesus they were walking with Jesus. They were disciples of Jesus. And yet, because of their disappointment or their sadness or whatever it is that they were going through, they were not able to see Jesus. But it wasn't until Jesus opened scriptures. It wasn't until Jesus sat down with them in the table and they saw Jesus take the bread, lift it up, and bless it, and say, God, thank you. When they saw the mannerisms of Jesus, they said, wait a minute, this is, this is him. This is Jesus. This is the one that, has, that, that we've been waiting for. And the Bible says that their hearts were burning. Now, fire burning. Why was it burning? Why was it burning? Why was it kindled? Why, why, why did, it, did it come alive? Because what God spoke to them at the time when they were walking and saw Jesus died at the cross, everything that Jesus spoke to them afterwards through that walk, rekindle once again. So there's always hope. He is the hope of glory. Now spiritual revival, spiritual revival and hearts ablaze. What is hearts ablaze about? Hearts ablaze is about keeping that passion, keeping that passion with Jesus Christ, keeping that relationship with Jesus Christ, making sure that we set a time to sit on the table and be and sit down with Jesus. Amen. We need that time. We need that time of fellowship. We need that time of, of communion. We need that time so that we can go and do what God called us to do. Because there's, there's endless, there's endless love and there's endless gifts and there's endless things that God has put inside of us. And there's levels to it. The Bible speaks about us going and knowing the love of God in width and length and height, meaning there is no end. There is no end to his love. There is no end to his glory. There is no end to faith. And we need that. We need that if we're going to go ahead and reach. Amen. We need that if we're going to go ahead and reach who God called us to reach. Now, I want you to go with me to Matthew. Matthew 25. Matthew 25, 15. And, un and unto one he gave five talents, to another two, another one, and to every man according to his several ability and straightway took his journey. That's it. Thank you. Now, what I want you to focus is on this. It says that to each one he gave what? He gave gifts. To each one, he gave gifts. So that means that each one in here got gifts. It doesn't matter if it's one. You still got a gift. <laughs> so what we need to do is we need to embrace the gift that God has given us so that we can complete and not look at someone else and come in to compete. We want to compete with people. Carl's got more than me. God, I want what Carl has. Yeah, well, you don't want to go what Carl's is going through, though. <laughs> Nobody does, right? 
But a lot of times, see, a lot of times we lose focus, right? Yeah. Just like these two disciples lost focus. It wasn't supposed for them to go back to Emmaus. It was for them to be in Jerusalem. Why in Jerusalem? Because in Jerusalem, hey! that's where the promise was coming. The promise was coming to Jerusalem. The promise was not going to Emmaus. Jesus says, wait, wait in Jerusalem because the promise from my father shall come in Jerusalem. So a lot of times we miss the blessing. A lot of times we miss in what God is doing. Why? Because we go to Emmaus. You see what I'm saying? A lot of times we're, we, we lose focus like these two disciples. Why? Because we're looking at the other person. My God, this person's got so many gifts. Look at how, the, how beautiful she, you know, she sings and the anointing that flows through her. And, you, and you, you, know, you know well that God did not call you to be up in the stage singing, but yet you want to be singing. <laughs> That's a cross that I can dream. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the Bible says make a joyful noise, though. So. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. But you know what I'm talking about, though, right? A lot of times we want to be who God did not call us to be. Just be a preacher. I'm happy being a preacher. The only thing I don't like is about, you know, the, the time. <laughs> that time is not for preachers, brother. This not. But you, you get what I'm saying, right? Yeah, yeah. So a lot of times we look at others, we look at other people's gifts, not realizing that God gave you gifts. Come on, Come on. Steve Hill, he evangelist, yeah. back in Pensacola, he says something like this. He says, when people will call me to go and minister, he says, listen, will you give me the time for altar call? And get people saved. Because if you don't, don't, don't invite me. You know why he said that? Because he knew the gift God gave him. The gift of being an evangelist. Of telling people, come to Jesus. Because if you don't come to Jesus, this world's condemned. But he has come not to condemn the world. He has come to save the world. So come to Jesus. You see, Jesus did not come to condemn these two disciples. They were already hopeless. They were going back to their old style. They were going back to their home. They were going back to Emmaus. Jesus said, no, it's not in Emmaus that my promise is coming. Come, come this way. Come this way. Come this way. So we need to, we need to understand that the ability that we each have gifts. So stop looking to the other person to compete. But look at within each other. Look within inside of us. So that we could complete the perfect will of God here on earth as he ordained it in heaven. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And he said he has given it. He has given us according to our own ability. No, that word ability, if you look it up, the word ability is the same as dunamis. Have you heard that word before? Yes. Dunamis. Dunamis is an inherent power. Dunamis is virtue. How many of you have virtue? Within yourselves. <laughs> virtue has nothing to do with flesh, humanity. Virtue comes from he virtue comes from God. So when he's talking about according to the ability or your own ability, he's talking about what God has given you. See, a lot of times. A lot of times, this is what we do. A lot of times, we, we say, okay, God, do it. God, do it. God, do it. And God says, I already did it. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I did it. I died at the cross. I resurrected on the third day. I am seated at the right hand of the Father. And it is finished. Amen. Now, it is up to you to do it. That's why he called us the body of Christ. We are the extension of Christ here on earth. Wow. And he has given us those gifts so that we can go ahead and fulfill what God has called us to do. Hallelujah. Now listen to this. 2 Corinthians 5.18. It says, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Right? 
What, what does that mean to you? He has given us the ministry. I want you to repeat this with me. He has given us, has given us the ministry. The ministry. There are no more excuses. You have a ministry. Come on. Of reconciliation. Reconciliation is everything that is lost. Everything that is misplaced. Everything that is out of order coming back to where it belongs. Bringing back everything to God. So God says... He has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Now, I don't care how you want to define ministry, but the way that I define it is your job place. Wherever the God has placed you in to make a difference, to be an influence. So not everybody is a pastor. Not everybody is a preacher. Not everybody is an apostle. Not everybody is a prophet. But you do have a ministry of some sort. So use that, use that influence, right? Use that place in which God placed you in, which he put you in to make, to be a difference maker, to to become a person of influence. And most of the time that place is where you work. So the way that I like to define ministry is like this. Ministry is my job place, my workplace, where I'm at most of the time, other than my house. Hello? Right? So let's take that place. Doesn't matter if you work in McDonald's or if you're an owner of, you know, some construction place or whatever the case may be. Take that place with the God, with the ability that, that God has given you, right? Those gifts that God has given you. Take that place and bring it back to God. Reconcile it back to God. And the only way, guys, the only way that we're going to do that is by being connected. Being connected to the Father. Being connected and having that relationship with His presence. See, these two disciples, their eyes were only open when they sat on the table. They sat on the table and they they started talking to each other as well. Then the scripture started, you know, burning with inside of them. When he started talking, didn't it start burning? Something started rekindling. That's why it's good to to be in a place like this. It's good to come. Do not forsake the fellowship of your brethren. Do not forsake the fellowship of the church. That's what Jesus was doing. What was Jesus doing at the time? He was having church. He was having church. So the beautiful thing is that we can have church every single time. There's no, you know how the Bible says, pray without ceasing? Yeah. We could have church without ceasing. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> we can have church without ceasing because we are. We are the church. We are the body. And he has gifted us. He has given us those gifts so that we can go ahead and reclaim back this world, reclaim everything that the enemy has stolen back to Jesus Christ. Because there's, there's not only potential, but there's anointing. There's anointing inside of you. And it is the anointing of God that breaks every yoke. The anointing of God. Spiritual revival, the spiritual, you know, you know how we were alive to the things of God? Because the anointing of God came and broke that yoke over us. Yeah. That lie, yeah. that oh. sin. And he came and he says, now you have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And now you carry that light. Yeah. We are the carriers of light. Amen. Can somebody say amen to that? We are carriers. We are carriers of the light of Jesus. And the reason why we are carriers of the light of Jesus is so that we can go ahead and reconcile. Reconcile everything that the enemy has taken. Reconcile it back to God. Bring it back to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to go back. Hallelujah. Thank God for our beautiful children. 
I love it. I love it. You know, Amen. some people, you know, some some people can't continue preaching when you know they distract them. I don't know. Some people, you know, some people, I don't want to judge anybody. Some people, oh, what's going on here? <laughs> Tell me to shut up. I can't, I can't preach. If you can't preach, something's wrong. Something's wrong. I don't know what kind of knowing you got. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I love this guy. Jesus. Jesus, right, he was sitting. He's sitting down. And he would tell the children to come to him. People trying to say, hey, keep the children away. Hey, tell them to stop. Hey, and Jesus, no, let them come. Let them come. Yeah, come sit down on my lap. And he would teach the children about the kingdom of heaven. Because Jesus is passionate for each and every one of us. He's more passionate about your kids than we are. I love my children. I love my children. I love my family. But guess who loves them more? Jesus loves them more. Jesus loves us. And that's why he came to the disciples. He went back to the disciples to show them, listen, it's not over. It's not over. Don't go back to Emmaus. The promise is not in Emmaus. It's here. You have to wait here. But the problem is that we like, we like Jerusalem so much that we don't want to leave Jerusalem. And get me wrong. Jerusalem is beautiful. There's a time for Jerusalem. There's a time to be in his presence, to be receiving the word, to be in prayer. But Acts chapter 1 8, if you can just turn with me to Acts chapter 1 8, it says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Ah, that sounds better. <laughs> it says, You shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, in Samaria. And to the end of the earth. So when, so when does it stop? When does it stop? It doesn't. It's endless. And endless. It's endless. The love of God is endless. The fire of God is endless. The glory of God is endless. You see, it's not about us asking God for more. It's about us giving God more. The more we give to God, the more he will reveal to us. God has given us everything. Everything that we see in existence. The very creation of the earth. Everything. Everything. The universe. The planets. Everything that we see. God created it. It came from within God. And God has said, God has said, everything that you see, it is yours. We are core heirs with God. We are core heirs. That means that everything that belongs to God belongs to us. And all we have to do is surrender more of ourselves so that he can reveal more of himself. There are levels to this. Tell the person sitting next to you, there's levels to the spiritual revival. There are levels to this passion. There are levels to God's grace. There are levels to his mercy. There are levels of God's glory. And we need to, we need to embrace that. We need to believe that and embrace it. Take it. Take it in. Church, it is ours. If we as a church don't take it, then who will? Right? If I had $10 million in the bank and I said to Pastor Carl, Carl Pastor Carl, I'm going to give you $10,000, what are you going to say? Amen. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you. I have no problem with you $10,000 if I had $10 million. Huh? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but listen to this. What have I done? If I have 10 million, I only give him 10,000. I only gave him some, right? Yeah. I gave him part of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's not what the Bible says. Right. When the Bible says that he has given everything according to his glory and riches, according means everything. Everything that God has is yours. So if God has a $10 million, that means that he's not going to give you 10000 He's going to give you the whole thing. 
We are partakers of the whole thing. And that's beautiful. Why? Because in the Old Testament, Jacob fought with God to get a blessing. Jesus died to give the blessing. And all we have to do is keep our hearts burning for him yes. to keep the blessing. The fire of God comes, and when it comes, it comes to destroy everything that is not of God yes. so that the only thing that remains would be of God. He said, John said this, John says, I baptize you with water, but there is one that comes, and he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. Wait a minute, wait, 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 let's get this revelation, please. Because a lot of us, we walk in relationship with the Holy Spirit. And the fire, where is it? So wait a minute, you can walk with the Holy Spirit and not have fire. Well, John said, there is one that comes and he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. And the reason why is because God wants to consume everything. Remember that we are ministers of what? Reconciliation. Amen. Praise God. Corey is listening. Love you, Corey. We are ministers of reconciliation, right? So that means, that means that everything that God put us in, he has given us the ability to consume it with the fire that he placed inside of us. That's the life of Jesus. Spiritual revival is about a lifestyle. That was the life of Jesus. Everywhere that Jesus went, even in his hometown, the Bible says in his hometown, he wasn't able to perform as much miracles. Why? Because they, you know why? It wasn't, it wasn't because of Jesus' fault. It wasn't because of his fault. The, re, the reason why is because people were looking at Jesus like Joseph's son, like the carpenter and not like the Messiah. That's right. So the Bible says that he couldn't perform as much miracles in his hometown because of it. So we need to change our perspective. We need to change our perspective in the way that we see things. You see, we look at things as hard or we look at things as difficult. And I'm here to tell you that it's not hard or difficult. It's not easy. It's not hard or difficult. It's impossible. It's impossible if we look it through the realms and the lenses of earth. But the Bible says that he is the God of the impossibilities. Amen. And he makes all things possible. So that means that we have to come. We have to elevate ourselves, right? We have to elevate our lives. We have to elevate our worship. We have to elevate our faith. We have to elevate who we are and come into that place where he is so that we can see the way that God sees. Because when we switch ourselves from the earthly realm into the heavenly realm, then the atmosphere, the environment that we're in is an environment of making all things possible. Come on. So yes, it is hard. And no, it's not easy. And sometimes... It's not even hard. It's impossible. And sometimes, you know what happens? Sometimes we lose. We lose courage like these two disciples lost courage. And we start stressing. Just because you're stressing doesn't mean you're in sin. It just means that we need to surrender it more to God so that we can have more of him. Yeah. 
Because the word of God declares that he said, let not your hearts be troubled. But let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, all stress, everything that we're going through, let it guard your hearts and let it guard your minds. The Holy Spirit, when the, sp when the mind is controlled by the Holy Spirit, the Word of God says that it is life and it is peace. What are we talking about this morning? We're talking about what? Spiritual revival. There are people out there that need what you have. People out there that needs what God has gifted us with. And all we need to do is come into that place. Come into that place of worship. Come into that place of his presence. Come into that place of table, of extended intimacy. Because that is the place and what God will reveal. That is the place where God will reveal. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to share a couple of things. There was this Iranian man, Iranian Christian. And he got arrested by the police, the Iranian police. They took him into custody and they started beating him up. They said, if you don't stop, not only are we going to kill you, but we're going to kill your family and everyone that you love we're going to kill he started crying they asked him why are you crying and he said this I'm crying because Jesus is talking to me you think I'm crying because I'm afraid of you I'm crying because right now Jesus is talking to me. And you know what he's saying? I love you. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on. But listen to this. Because he is sharing this with the, with the Iranian police. Jesus is ministering to him, saying, I love you. And he is saying that to them. Guess what he is saying to the people that is torturing him? That Jesus loves them. They killed him. They killed a new convert. And 20 other people were arrested. And he never denied Hallelujah. Jesus. And I asked myself, God, I don't know if I can do that. God says, if you, you can, if you're in me, stay there. Stay in his presence. No matter how difficult it may be. You see, there was, there was the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They, they, were, they were getting ready to get burned, right? And I'm talking about the tortured burning, not the, not the, the Holy Ghost fire. Come on. The tortured burning. But they, the Bible says that they did not deny God. He says, even, I believe that God, my God will deliver me. But even if he does not deliver me, I will not bow down to an idol. Come on. Pastor Carl was mentioning, God is burning idols. God is burning idols. God is burning idols with his holy fire. And these three people, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, even if my God will not deliver me, I will not bow down to this idol. They put him in the fiery furnace. And the Bible says that it was the fourth man. There was three people that got in there, right? But there was the fourth man. Come on. There was the fourth man. There was a fourth man. That fourth man came to consume the earthly fire. My God, you want to devour the earthly fire? That we need to be in the heavenly fire. We need to be in that fire. The Holy Ghost fire. The fire that Jesus Christ came and baptized us with so that we can go and destroy all the earthly fires. All these strange fires the Bible talks about. There are strange fires out there. Strange fires out there. But God has given us a fire that we know, that we can recognize, Amen. that we can walk with. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can walk with this fire. We can make a difference. We can beat the light. We can be that light. There are two missionaries back in, in the Philippine Islands. 
back in May 2001, from 2001, 2002, June 2002, and they were kidnapped by, they were kidnapped by terrorists by the names of Martin and Gracia Burnham. And people came to rescue them. And in the rescue, they killed Martin. They killed a husband. So through it all, Gracia, she lost hope. Now, imagine this. Imagine this. They were captured. They were, they were in the Philippine Islands doing what? They were doing God's will, right? Why? Because they loved Jesus. Because they heard a call from God and says, you know what, God, if this is where you want us to be, that's where we're going to go. And they were captured. They were, their terrorists captured them. They were basically in prison. And through it, they killed the husband. And she lost hope. She says, when I saw my husband die, I said, God, might as well kill me too. And when she realized that she was coming back without her husband, she said, I was sitting in my home, beautiful home, air conditioned. And I remember when I was in the jungles, when I was ministering out there, and people had to be in a hideout. I'm sorry, guys. People had to be in a hideout because they weren't able to proclaim God like that in the public. And she says, here I am. I'm back home. I can't come to get to church and serve. Not worry about a machine gun coming in. Well, nowadays, it's different, right? And she says, but every time, I said, God, if you kept me alive, if you kept me alive, what was the purpose? She says, it's not for you to feel sorry about yourself. And yes, you can mourn for your husband, but I'm here to let you know that your husband is with me and he's rejoicing right now. Amen. 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 That's, that's good news, right? But she was still mourning. And the Bible says, mourn with those that mourn. Be happy with those that are happy. She was mourning and God was not there to badger her, to, to make her feel any worse. He was just there to let her know, hey, I'm here. Ministering to her. And the reason why you're alive is because every time you think about your husband or every time you think when you were in captive, I want you to pray for that. Because your prayers will be heard your prayers will be heard, and I will intervene just like I intervened, and I kept you alive, and I kept you alive with a purpose. I kept you alive so that you can be my prayer warrior for the island of the Philippines. And you're going to pray. You're going to pray for those people, and I'm going to hear, and I'm going to intervene. She realized that the gift, gift that God gave her, And so God turned her mourning into death. Guys, we are here because God is not done with us yet. So I thank God for Pastor Carl and leading this spiritual revival because spiritual, I, and, and believe me guys, I love it when I come together and, and, and the presence of God is so strong and, and I'm just laying down in the Holy Ghost and I'm receiving, but then what, then what church? We can't just stay in Jerusalem. We need to go. Go into, let's start in our workplace. Let's start there. Then let's go to Mexico. Come on. Let's go wherever God opens the door. Let's go. Freely give what you have freely received.
I believe, I believe that God is ministering to us. He is encouraging us. He is telling some of us, come on, guys. Emmaus is not the right way. That's not the place. Amen? I'm here to tell you that the promise has come. And Jesus says, those that thirst, come to me and drink. The Bible says, those that are hungry and thirsty for righteousness shall be filled. How many of us want to be filled? How many of us want more? Say, God, I want more. I want more. More of righteousness. More of your glory. More of your presence. More of you. And God is saying, if you want more, then give me more. Because the more you give me, the more I will reveal. The more I will pour out. The more I will give unto you. Give me more of you. Give me more of your heart. Give me more of your mind. Give me more of your talents. Give me more of your hands. Give me more. More of you. Give me your eyes. Give me all of you. Give me more. Give me all. Give me all of you. Because God said, I have given you all of me. I have given you all of me. Jesus, when he died, he didn't leave half of his body in the cross. He gave it all to the point that when they put the spear on his side, all of his blood came out of his body because he gave it all. God is saying, give me all of you because I already gave it. I already gave all to you. The Lord says, all that is mine is yours. So stop worrying. Stop worrying about what you're going to do tomorrow, what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat. Look at the birds. Look at the grass. I give. I give the birds what they eat, and they, they're flying freely. They're not concerned what they're going to eat. And God is saying, how much more of value are you to me? So seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things. All these things are yours. All these things are yours. Tell the person, it's my, thank you, Lord, it's mine. Thank you, Lord, it's mine. I take it. I take it. I take it. But right now, right now, what I want to do is I want to give you more of who I am. So church, if you're with me, if you're with me this, this morning and you say, God, I want to give you more of who I am. And just stand with me. Stand with me. Pastor Carl, if you can come up as well, please. He's about to finish. Just give a hand if you would. I know it's just <laughs> anointed word. Listen, don't go anywhere yet. He's going to pray for people. And then Corey will dismiss you. I just want to release a word. Go ahead. To you. That's why I got him. <laughs> but I want the church, I want the church to pay attention too because you're part of this. You're part of what God is doing. Pastor Tracy, come here too, please. The kids, come here. He's just the natural ones. Just the natural ones. You need a bigger altar. <laughs> but you know what? That's what God is saying. Because you've created an altar. Because you have created an altar for my presence to come down. I want you to know that the fire will continue to burn. It will not cease.
And I want to keep it all God because I know him. So I don't want any flesh to come in here. So I just want to keep it all God. But he's saying, I've seen the sweat, your prayers, even your struggles. He says, I have even seen and heard the complaints. And God said, it was all a process, and it's still a process. Because what I am doing is something greater than just local. You know, there is truly an apostolic gift over you. Now, this is Pedro talking, not the Holy Ghost. Well, yeah, well, no, I, I'm confirming what the Holy Ghost is saying. There's truly an apostolic gift over your life. And so, so you see people coming and going. You see people getting restored, filled, on fire, and then they leave. And you ask, <laughs> you ask sometimes, in, in this question, I ask, God, you know, you're doing something, why do I have to leave? Because God has given me an apostolic mantle. Amen. See, for them... For them, for them, that was a base. This is a base. For them, this was a base, their base. A base where they can come, be refilled, go, and do what God called them to do. He said, but at the same time, I want you to look around. Because it's not only a base for the apostolic, but it's also a house. A house of worship. A house of prayer. A house or my presence continues to burn. And these are your spiritual children that will back you up, that will be there. And I believe that this is only truly, this is Pedro speaking, I believe this is only truly the beginning. This place, you've been here, what, a year now? One year. And when did you start the two services? I saw about a year. So, Lord, I believe, look at the second service, it's filled. And the, you know, first service is awesome, too. I, I believe that you won't be here that much, you know, well, longer. See, I'm talking about God and God's timing, you know, for him that can be two years, one year, six months, a year, whatever the case may be. Don't, don't focus on the year. What I'm saying is that God is going to expand. And with, it, and with expansion, with expansion, there's provision. So don't, you know, don't worry about that because <laughs> he's with you. I receive that word. Amen. I receive that word. Give it up for Pastor Pedro. Amen. Please. Can you guys just stretch your hands to your past? Stretch your hands to the past. Please just stretch. It says, Lord, bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Jesus. Bless him, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for what they're doing. Thank you, Lord, because for their obedience, for not giving up, for loving your presence and loving your fire, for loving people and seeing them on fire. Thank you, Lord. Bless them, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Love this man. Hey, listen, he wants to lay hands on some people. So if you feel like what he was saying resonated on the inside of you, I want to welcome you to come on forward. Ushers, help me form a line here, and Corey is going to bless you as you go. Can we give it up one more time for the word this morning? Pastor Pedro, thank you so much. We love you. We love you. So you guys can come on forward. Pastor Pedro would love to pray for you. Just uh, have some ushers help us make a line right here. For everybody else, thank you guys for coming. Thanks for joining us. Can we give it up one more time for Jesus? Hey, bless somebody on your way out. Have an amazing Sunday. Join us Friday night at 7.30 for uh, Moving Mountains, a new series in July. And we'll see you guys next week. God bless you. Have an amazing day.